In normal chemical reactions, you can classify reaction as exergonic or endergonic. Exergonic reactions release energy because the energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants. Endergonic reactions require energy because the products are at a higher energy than the reactants. Exergonic reactions will generally happen faster than endergonic reactions because the activation energy is smaller than endergonic reactions. Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required to overcome the transition state of a reaction. When an appropriate catalyst is introduced to the reaction, the activation energy required to create products is lowered. The catalyst will help break or form bonds in the substrate molecules by binding to the substrate in such a way that less energy is needed overall to overcome the transition state. Since the activation energy is reduced, enzymes will cause the rate of reaction to increase, often by a factor of a million or more. In living things, enzymes are used constantly to transform one chemical into another. It is very rare, however, for this transformation to take only one step. Typically, there's a pathway with many small steps involving many different enzymes along the way. Metabolic pathways are a sequence of chemical reactions undergone by a compound or class of compounds in a living organism. Metabolic pathways can occur in a chain of reactions, like the pathway that converts phenylalanine into fumarate and acetyl acetate. It takes six steps in the metabolic pathway to finally get to the end products. Some metabolic pathways occur in a cycle instead of a chain, like the Calvin cycle of photosynthesis, which uses carbon dioxide to make glucose. Enzymes act on specific substrates. They fit together at the active site, almost like a lock and key. Once they're bound together, the enzyme can act on the substrate. It may break the substrate down or build it up with another substrate. The enzyme may also have an allosteric site, which is a binding site other than the active site. It can alter the shape and activity of the enzyme. The active sites and allosteric sites can be hijacked by inhibitors, which will slow or even stop the action of an enzyme. There are two categories of inhibitors, competitive and non-competitive inhibitors. Competitive inhibitors will bind at the active site, preventing the substrate from being able to bind. A real example of a competitive inhibitor is galactose, which binds to the active site of lactase, blocking the substrate lactose from being able to bind. A non-competitive inhibitor will bind with an allosteric site on the enzyme, which results in the change of shape of the enzyme. This shape change will prevent the substrate from being able to fit into the active site. A real example of a non-competitive inhibitor is iodine, which binds to an allosteric site on lactase. It alters the shape of the enzyme and prevents lactose from binding to the active site. When we look at a graph of the rate of reaction and substrate concentration, we can see normal enzyme action. The rate of reaction increases with the addition of more substrate until it reaches an equilibrium point. When a competitive inhibitor is present, it's still possible to reach the same rate of reaction as the uninhibited enzyme, but the substrate concentration will have to be much higher to achieve this rate. When a non-competitive inhibitor is added, the enzyme cannot reach the same rate of reaction as the uninhibited enzyme. This is because the binding site is altered, which won't be able to react with the substrate no matter what the concentration is. Only the enzymes that are not bound to inhibitors will be able to affect the rate of reaction, resulting in a lower maximum reaction rate. Sometimes, at the end of a metabolic pathway, a product is made which will inhibit one of the first enzymes in the pathway. This is called end product inhibition. Inhibiting enzymes in the first step will slow the production and eventually stop the production of the end product. This is a built-in regulation system for many metabolic pathways. One example pathway is here, where threonine, the initial substrate, goes through many transformations by multiple enzymes and eventually forms isoleucine as the end product. 
Isoleucine is a non-competitive inhibitor for the first enzyme in the pathway called threonine deaminase. When the concentration of isoleucine increases, the number of inhibited enzymes also increases until the pathway is shut down. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.